Hello aliens and worms, I'm Cosmocat, thanks for tuning in today. I have a speed art vlog for you today, and the illustration featured is the artwork you see at the beginning of these videos. I did have a lot of fun on this piece, uh, it took me approximately 9 hours or so, possibly a little bit more I believe. Um, I did take some breaks, but I did this mostly like from start to finish with only minimal breaks for the bathroom and, uh, and food occasionally. I did use two tutorials. Uh, to aid me in this one, so I do have the links to those in the description below. The first one that I employed was called Digital Painting Tutorial, and it's by Andantanias. So, if you go and look at that right now, uh, you will see that I only make it to about step four in this one uh, before I go ahead and start. I guess I become obsessed with the way that I ended up doing things, because I didn't really follow it exactly correctly or anything like that, and everybody's painting style is going to be different, or coloring style just in general. So I, when I started liking what I was seeing better than the image that this tutorial had essentially put in my head that my drawing could look like, I started following along with that instead. The second tutorial is called Smudge the Cloud by McLeelum, and obviously that is, I did use that for the dust particles that you see, or the dust clouds that you do see uh, further on into the drawing. And again, for that one, I didn't really make it all the way through this tutorial. I made it part way through, and then really enjoyed the way that it was looking, and from there... Actually, it was the style of the clouds that kind of inspired the style of the rest of the piece. It ended up being a lot less about lots of gradients, lots of colors, lots of... Uh, or not, not lots of colors, it has lots of colors, but lots of uh, variation in colors, like, like heavy shading and really detailed, anything like that. It became a lot more about big areas of bright colors to convey the idea of a cloud of dust rather than actually going ahead and fully rendering what a cloud of dust might actually look like. And I kind of enjoyed that. I really enjoyed uh, the way that it made the rest of the piece look in general around it. It really did inspire the entire rest of the drawing, uh, doing the dust, coloring the dust cloud part first, that is. It was definitely a little bit difficult coloring in the character in the center because I hadn't this is the first time that I've really tried like really really tried to use this kind of style before I believe I've tried lineless styles before and I've tried styles before where it's you know it relies a lot more on just the uh, on the lighting and shading to identify different parts of the body or different parts of you know a structure in general um, but this is the first time I think that I've done it really at least in a way that I feel executes my idea properly. In a way that y that other people can probably see it the way that I see it. Which was encouraging. The pose reference actually for the character in the center was actually a picture of myself. I actually had, uh, I had my partner take a few pictures of me. He took about like 30 pictures, which I believe are still, that I still have saved. Um, and I sifted through all of those I because I had an idea for the pose in mind. And a lot of the times when I have when I have that idea in my head, I have this this thing that I, I I want it to look like this. I need it to look like this. And I can spend sometimes like hours and hours and hours just searching for a pose reference to help to help me draw it out. I have a, I do have a really tough time still um, with figures just in general, like making sure that everything's proportionate. I can draw a figure without. Uh, without a reference, but honestly, I do have a much easier time using a reference as I assume most people would honestly, but um, But my biggest issue and it's the thing that I still really have to work on is um, Being able to do it without it because right now I am I am very terrible at getting proportions correctly the I sometimes exaggerate the way bodies move or look uh, when doing certain things in ways that don't look appealing. A lot of a lot of things in cartoons and animation and whatever, you can exaggerate a character's body parts or or you know muscular structure or whatever to make to, to suit your needs to make an action look more appealing or more dramatic or something like that. But I am not quite there yet, and I do believe I have to work on being able to understand the way a body is supposed to look first before I can start saying, oh well this is just my style, this is the way that it looks for me, you know. So that is something that I'm hoping to possibly take a class for eventually in the future. But it was really fun to use a, a picture of myself for the pose, and it is kind of cool that I do have that option. The theme of the drawing in general, and the theme of the channel in fact, is a kind of a mix between retro wave and retro futurism. Retro wave being, uh, you know, like 
it, if you've ever played Blood Dragon, um, it's Far Cry Blood Dragon. It's kind of like that style, like that really 80s techy kind of, um, essentially like their idea of what the future would be like sort of thing. Retrofuturism is pretty similar to that, except that you're think instead of thinking 80s style, you're thinking more uh, Tomorrowland at Disney World. So it's like, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just our ideas back then of what we thought the future would be like, even though clearly we haven't gotten there yet and things have definitely, certain things have definitely evolved beyond that point. We'll never really achieve that style that we were expecting to. But I really do find both Retrowave and Retrofuturism to be extremely fascinating. I like that idea of... I, I guess I, I prefer the idea of our future looking like that rather than the picture that we typically have in our heads now. The, the way we see the future now is typically more of an iRobot sort of thing where, um, where it's either really grungy in certain areas or it's extremely sleek like an iPhone. You know, it's extremely like... Like everything that's fancy, everything that's technologically advanced has a clean white polish to it and, you know, things like that. I don't, I don't find that aesthetically appealing. And I can imagine that that's probably not going to change for most people. A lot of people will think that's really cool, it's really nice, and that's fine. But I like the idea of more of a Jetsons future where things are a little bit clunkier, a little bit more stylized, a little bit less about minimalism a little bit more about I don't know just like doing the job but also you know looking kind of snazzy at the same time so I really do like that kind of stuff the other thing I guess that you could say is lying underneath the retro wave and retro futurism would be kind of a space theme and obviously like an alien like theme uh, we are supposed to be in an area that is not of this world, somewhere else. The actual setting itself is a derelict ship that has been uh, destroyed in a lot of different ways, floating out in space, uh, which requires you to still wear a full um, a full suit to be able to a full space to be able to walk around in it. And you see everything turn on as we hack into the mainframe and access all of their files, I suppose. Before we end things off, I do want to discuss the reasons behind me changing my my persona from Sarcasm and Sickness to Cosmic Cat, because I figure that might be something that people will be curious about. Uh, for those of you who know me from before, I was Sarcasm and Sickness until recently. In fact, this channel does still have Sarcasm and Sickness videos on it. Those videos will go away as soon as I have a decent collection of Cosmic Cat videos to replace them, essentially. Um, I don't want to suddenly strip my channel down to nothing, but I do plan on getting rid of those eventually, so you can expect that soon, I suppose. Um, the reason I changed from, from Sarcasm and Sickness just in general to whatever was that Sarcasm and Sickness was a username that I created way back in high school. And, well, first of all, nobody really... I mean, unless you're actually still in high school or maybe you're very freshly out, I would imagine that you know, once you reach my age, there are a few people who really identify with all the things that they uh, that they thought of themselves back in high school. Um, a big part of high school for me, or a big part of schooling in general for me, was bullying. And Sarcasm and Sickness was a username that kind of was born from that. Essentially, a lot of what I had to do in high school to defend myself from the people who were still bullying me from middle school and on or whatever, was to uh, throw back whatever they gave me uh, in sarcasm, you know, whatever, whatever crap they gave me for, or whatever it was, oh, your hair looks weird, or you're so skinny, or you're, you know, like, you're not intelligent, whatever, whatever junk that they had to throw at me, I would always dish it back in sarcasm, like, oh, well, you're so smart, you know, Mr. D plus over here, you know, things like that, like, sarcasm ended up being a defense mechanism for me, and it being something that, that protected me from, the bullying and kind of helped me grow into being a person who was more outspoken because I believe back in elementary school I was a lot more outspoken but in middle school when the bullying got really bad I kind of retreated back into my shell I didn't really talk to, mo to many people at all and even those that I did talk to were pretty horrible to me regardless so I didn't really have any true friends until high school and even then the bullying was still pretty bad to the point that I actually got physically abused at one point so, in general, uh, I had to find a way to protect myself in some way. Obviously, sarcasm can't actually defend you from somebody smacking you in the back of the head while you're walking in the hallway, but it did protect me from, from being bothered too much in class 
and uh, eventually I feel like it ended up taking over parts of me that I didn't want it to. And that's what I, that's what sarcasm the sickness means in the end, is that it became a bit of a virus, an illness that slowly, slowly ate away at parts of myself that, uh, that weren't inherently bad. And it was a shame. And I, and I adopted this name because it felt like that's what I had to do. That's what I had to do for myself was to, to embrace this part of me to protect myself. But I am no longer in high school, I'm no longer in school at all, and while the name did stick for me for a while, and honestly I never thought that I would get over it, I never thought that I would uh, ever want to move away from sarcasm and sickness, but now I find myself in a place where I don't do this anymore, I don't defend myself with sarcasm anymore. At this point in time, I tend to face my problems a little bit more head-on in certain ways, or just outright blocking them, which I know is actually the opposite of facing your problems, but I would say that I pick my battles and um, and I don't find myself in positions where I have to defend myself as often because I simply don't put myself into situations. I can actively avoid situations where I might be threatened in general by other people's ignorance or other people's just willingness to be horrible to other people and uh and it's a it's a nice position to be in it's a privileged position to be in to be honest because not everybody uh has that being able to work from home is a huge deal because i don't have to deal with you know like co-workers or customers or bosses or whomever that might be one of those people who would you know that who would harm me like verbally or emotionally in some way so sarcasm the sickness, trying to call myself sarcasm the sickness, trying to say to myself, I am sarcasm the sickness, it didn't feel correct anymore, it didn't feel right, it felt like like trying to call myself by a name that wasn't mine, and it felt foreign, and so I felt like it was finally time for a change while I was, you know, already going over the channel and changing everything as it is. Um, I figured this is the best and probably the only time to go ahead and do that. And so for this one, I wanted to choose something that represents the way I feel about myself now. Or at least represents things that I care about now, things that matter to me now. Um, after high school, I did take some college courses. I never graduated, but I did take some college courses. And one of those courses, wow, one of those courses, excuse me, was astronomy. And I really enjoyed it. Unfortunately, it was an 8 a.m. class and the planetarium is very dark. So I did sleep through, unfortunately, a decent portion of those classes. But whenever we turned on, you know, the, the display on the ceiling, it was beautiful, fantastic. I was very interested. I'm still very interested in space. And for those of you who follow me on Twitter, those of you who follow or who, who are um, supporters on my Patreon, those of you who just talk to me in general or keep up with things that I do in general, I suppose, um, should know that I do have a story that I've been working on for years now, which is extreme, or the setting is outer space, essentially. And it is very space themed. And, and that's something that I've been, like I said, I've been working on that for years. And uh, the theme of space and aliens um, in general has been something that has been a big part of my life for, wow, actually probably since high school a little bit, some of it anyway, but mostly it started after high school. And um, another major theme in my life has been cats. And cats have always been kind of important to me, or really important to me. I was born into a family with a cat. I've grown up with cats. When I moved out, I had to have a cat, otherwise it didn't feel like home. And in general, I, I, I just feel like we, I have a strong relationship with cats. I always kind of have, especially now with my cat at home, Sunny. He's like my best friend, essentially. And so I wanted to I wanted to combine these things that I loved, and I, I actually thought about a whole bunch of different names beforehand. It took a really long time to settle on the term Cosmic Cat. The name actually, in the end, came from... Uh, I was searching up... Because I knew I wanted to have either a space theme or an alien theme, mostly because of uh, my space alien story and all of the art that revolves around it that I've been doing. Um, so I was looking up pictures of space themed, or you know, like space objects, space, you know, like cel celestial bodies, things like that. And I was looking through pictures of nebulas, and one of them is actually called the Cat's Paw Nebula. And it was a really cool looking thing. It's a three, it's a, it's a three-toed 
kind of cat's paw sort of thing. It's kind of a loose interpretation, of course, like anything really is. But what inspired the name more so was the description of the photograph. The description said something along the lines of, um, or described it as the cosmic cat. And that sounded really, really cool to me. And I was immediately taken with it. I tried, I really did try to think of other names that I would like better, but I just couldn't shake that. I couldn't shake Cosmic Cat. And to make it, you know, a little easier to say, a little bit cuter, a little bit more stylized, Cosmi Cat was born, essentially. Uh, combining the, the, C, the C at the end of Cosmic and the C at the beginning of Cat into just one. Which I'm sure you could have figured out on your own. I do trust your intelligence. And so, yeah, so that's what I decided on, it was Cosmic Cat and um, I feel like it fits a lot better. I feel like it's a lot less reliant on the way I feel about myself at any given point in time and relies a lot more on things that I care about. And generally speaking, I don't think, especially since I'm creating a story completely revolving around it, I don't believe that my love for space is going to go away anytime soon. And I am 100% certain that my love for cats is never going to go away. So that's about all that I had to talk about today. This did end up being a little bit longer of a broadcast than I thought it would. And I do apologize for that. Um, I think I actually ended up spending a lot more time talking about my process of the drawing than I thought I would. Because I did always plan on having this being a two-parter. You know, two different subjects in mind. But I didn't think I would have that much to say about the drawing. I hope you enjoyed and I hope it wasn't too long for you. This has been Cosmicat, signing off.